Hi, Joshua. Hi. Hi. So thanks for uh, sitting with us for our people of Mulgrave. Um, what grade are you in? Grade three. And who's your teacher? Mr. Hemiller and Miss Butler. Oh, nice. Well, I we heard that you have uh, um, that an article was recently written on Tinker.com about a game that you designed, and I wanted to know a little bit more about how you came about to design a, a game. Can you tell me what got you started programming? First, when I was in grade two, a bunch of grade twelve and introduced me to code.org, which is a programming website. And later, while I was scrolling through code.org, mm -hmm. I, I found that said, if you like code.org, try Tinker. And then I asked my mom and dad to, to download it, and I was allowed. When I first started, I didn't get any experience, so I went to a programming club and I got an, a programming book for Scratch. And then, and then I was, and I also got some ideas from other people's programs by looking at their codes. And then I was able to create a game. My most famous game is called Plan for the Shapes. And you're this, you're a plant and you're supposed to shoot the shapes and it's endless and there's no reloads. And do you think that, that the fact that it's endless and no reloads makes it a um, better game for, for people to play? Well, it just makes it easier. I see, I see. So it's, is uh, programming, it sounds like uh, programming is a passion of yours. Is that something that you uh, love doing on your spare time? Do you want to continue yeah. to do it? Yeah. Yeah? But, I want, go ahead. I wanted to become a game producer. And uh, what, do, what does that entail? What does a game producer do? Game producers program to create their games. And, with, and when they create their games, they test it. And, and if it works, then, then they'll be able to upload it. That's fantastic. Did you, in putting your game together, um, what were some of the things that you came across that you thought, oh, this is a bit of a challenge? Did you have any challenges that you have to think through to solve as you were working on your game? Yeah, when I was thinking about the ammos, there was no, there, I tried drawing my own ammo, but, but the ammos were quite hard to draw because at first, I, I tried drawing like f on from top, but then it it just looked like a a line pointing up, and it just looked like some kind of sound wave. Oh. So then, what? How did you decide to change it so that it it uh, solved that? I tilted it. I tilted it, and then I did, and then I did a flat line. Mm -hmm. And with the and when I did the flat line, it looked, it kind of looked like a laser. Huh, much more like an ammo then. Yeah. Well, that's fantastic. I'm actually gonna go ahead and when I share this video on the Connections newsletter, underneath the Connection newsletter, I'll put a link to, to the article that was written on Tinker.com because they were quite impressed with your game. Apparently your game is a popular game on their website, is that correct? Yeah. Yeah, so I, I'm sure that we'll have many keen students wanting to, to try it. So I'll be sure to link the article uh, so that uh, students can find your game. And I just want to tell you congratulations and thank you for taking time to chat with us. Thank you.